And we are rolling on January 16th. Maybe. So ridiculous. I've got to talk to Jane about this. And we are rolling on January 16th, where we are about to hear an extemp speech on. What is the solution for significantly reducing plastic waste in Okay, we're going to talk about plastic waste and reducing it. You're standing a little close to the board, so you want to go in the power center of the room, not too far back, not too far forward. Uh, in the power stance, feet a little wider apart. Uh, look around the room, make sure everyone is uh, looking up at you. All eyeballs are upon you. Communicate respect non-verbally and yell time and he'll give you time signals. Okay. Uh, communicate respect non-verbally. Say to yourself as you look around the room, I respect my audience. Find friendly eyes near the front and the center. Say your name. Feel the love. Start your speech. Oh, this desk is just wonderful. Okay, good. Hi, guys. My name is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. So, if human civilization was completely destroyed today and our maps were, I mean, our cities were just wiped off the map, it would be extremely easy for those in the future to find out when the mid 20th century began. Why? Plastic. According to a 2017 New York Times article, from the 1950s to today, 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic has been produced, and half of that plastic has been made since 2004. Plastic is not a magical object that vanishes in thin air when it's done being used. It has to go somewhere, and that somewhere is our oceans. Our oceans are drowning in plastic, and no one is paying attention. Today, I want to answer the question, what is the solution for significantly reducing plastic waste in our oceans? My answer is reducing the amount of plastic we use, taxing single-use water bottles, and transitioning to a circular economy business model. There is significance to this matter because plastic doesn't just affect the ocean. It affects human beings on this earth. Now, just by a raise of hands, how many of you guys eat fish or sushi or seafood? Okay, so I see that's almost all of you. Well, I have some unfortunate news. Plastic sits in the before entering the oceans, and these chemicals are ingested by fish. Therefore, humans are eating contaminated fish and mammals, and this will ultimately impact human health. So this brings me to my first solution. The first solution is to reduce the amount of plastic we use. In order to do this, we need to pass a, a bill similar to the SB705 bill that was proposed in California that bans all single-use EPS food containers. Polystyrene, or commonly known as styrofoam, is one of the worst offenders of plastic pollution. And it's generally not recycled because of food waste. Some cities have actually taken the initiative and they've already banned EPS, such as New York City and Miami Beach. However, as a nation, we all need to take that step forward and ban EPS once and for all. And according to a 2017 LA Times article, they stated that passing this law would reduce tons of polystyrene from polluting our oceans. And reducing the amount that we use is, makes more of an impact on the environment than recycling itself. Now this brings me to my second solution, is to tax single-use single use water bottles. According to a 2017 Guardian article, there was more than 480 billion plastic drinking bottles that were sold in 2016, and this is estimated to increase to 583.3 billion in 2021. Plastic bottles are made out of polythylene phthalate, which is highly recyclable. However, half of those bottles that were produced in 2016 were collected for recycling, and only 7% of those collected were turned into new bottles. Most plastic bottles that are produced end up in the landfill or our ocean. And this number is just going to continue to increase, therefore there's going to be more bottles to endanger our oceans. So if we tax single-use water bottles, this will decrease the amount of water bottles polluting our oceans, and also encourages the usage of reusable water bottles. Now my last solution, to transition to a circular business model. We need to develop fully reusable, recyclable, and compostable packaging within business operations by 2025. If the plastic waste issue wants to be solved, we have to go directly to the source. This business model would create an effective after-use pathway 
for lots of plastics to reduce leakage into our oceans. In order to achieve an economy that does this, and that will effectively reduce pollution and waste, companies need to begin by making their packaging from post-consumer recycled plastic, such as um, an empty shampoo bottle that could be repurposed. Now, according to a 2017 Huffington Post article, um, they can, this demand for the purchasing reusable practice can rise and it can be made easily for post-consumer recycled plastic. In summary, I have shown you the three solutions we need to take in order to, in order to significantly reduce plastic waste in our oceans. There should be no doubt in this room that we need to implement these three solutions. It is our responsibility to make sure the ocean has more fish than plastic. And according to a 2017 LA Times article, in the five minutes that you heard me give this speech, more than 180,000 pounds of plastic went into our ocean. And a fair share of it came right here from California. Plastics could have a profound health consequences on you or the ones you love. Thankfully, solutions still exist. The less plastic we make, the less we throw away, the healthier our state, our planet, and our well-being. Remember, the ocean is everybody's business. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a tradition. It was 4.54, so she came within the time period. Thank you for respecting the time period. Sarah, can I tell you to push that podium all the way to the corner? Prevalent. And push the table a little further over so you have a little more walking space. Oh, this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Okay, good. And then come back to the center of the room. Yeah, good. Okay, good. Now what we do is we'll go around the room and we'll ask one person to stand up, say their name, and uh, offer uh, something that they like. And then we'll ask one person to suggest some things that you could improve upon. We'll start in the front row. Stand up, say your name, and say what you like about Sarah's speech on recycling. Uh, I'm Ramin. Uh, what I like is your use of statistics. I think just the, especially the five minutes on 80,000 pounds is like, because a lot of times people say, oh, there's a lot of plastic in the ocean, but it really puts into perspective of like, in that small amount of time, how much actually goes you know, into pollution. So I thought that was really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Improvement. Haley? Okay, um, I guess you could improve by like making it more like sticky, like he says, by like, I know it's hard to do something like environmental and make it like sticky with stories and stuff, but like if you can make it more a little more interesting, but I, I liked it, it was good. Thank you. Haley, uh, we're going to um, Raise our hand every time you say like in your, in your presentation and critique so you lose it as a transitional device. Um, I'm going to sort of, uh, can you watch, make sure this doesn't fall off as I'm talking to her because yes. I'm really distracted having to hold this down. I think I'm going to ask you to man the camera while I watch this next second speech. What's our time? I can't like, yeah. Um, sure. Sarah, yes. yeah, let's talk about what I really like, and then I'll talk about some things I think you can do better. I like the fact that you really were ready. You really prepared the speech. You knew your material. You were very credible. You had good sources. You fully cited them. They were very recent. They were good sources. Uh, some of them were each actually not even just from the... Uh, Happy, you know, Google, uh, you know, uh, search doc. And by the way, where do we meet next week? Powell Library. Powell Library, third floor. Does everyone know how to get there, where it is? Does everyone know where the Powell Library is, how to get to the third floor? You take the elevator up. Okay, good. We're going to have a lecture on the deep internet. But you had good sources, such as the uh, New York Times. The L.A. Times, right? So, you know, you had good sources that were real recent, and that was uh, very credible. Now, let me say what I think you could improve on. The intro was a little long, and wasn't just a... Uh, I, just, I think this is what Haley was kind of getting at. It wasn't just this killer grabber at the top. You, know, you chose it, but it was a 
it's a tough topic. It's by the way, it's much like a lot of the econ topic. You know, that people hear, oh, I'm going to do the gross national product. People's eyes glaze over, and they go, Oh God, you know, I'm going to sleep. I've heard so many pollution speeches. You know, right? so you have a challenge, and I think you met the challenge well. But I think you could have done a little better on your. Um, but you did tie back to it, and you did what I call present an arresting fact that was very dramatic. And that's another thing I want you to all notice about uh, Sarah's presentation was she had a little bit of passion or a little edge to her voice, like she believed what she was saying. I do believe what I was saying. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, and that's good because, uh, you know, that is persuasive because, you know, the way it works in the realm of persuasion, people think, oh, if Sarah believes this, she seems credible, nice person, you know, trustworthy, you know, etc., dynamic, and so forth. I think I'll believe her. I believe it too. <coughs> see? And your passion and your believing it, you can up it even a little bit more, and it will be uh, even more effective. And you know, don't be afraid to put it aside. I went down to Santa Monica Beach and you know, <laughs> you know, and stumbled over this garbage. You know, and you know, raise your voice a little bit and you know, really uh, say you have an aside saying it's just outrageous. We don't respect Mother Nature, and you know, Mother Nature showed us in Santa Barbara what she's capable of. You know, right? Yeah, okay. You thought you were high and mighty up there, Oprah, didn't you? Well, she blew your house away. Okay, bye, Oprah. Uh, anyway, um, your thesis was well put. Let me give you some suggestions. And by the way, it's too late for Sarah, but not for the rest of you. So when I'm giving the suggestions for improvement, they're for all of you to take notes on and not make the same mistakes that Sarah made. Uh, Sarah didn't number her preview. Right? So I'm going to have three points, one, two, and three, and then you give us my, I'm going to have three solutions, one, two, and three, and here's my first solution with your voice. What, what, that, what that does with your voice, it brings out your narrative, see? It makes your narrative more important and easier to follow for your audience. Significant statement, yes. Uh, you still you kept it to human beings. You could even have personalized it. It's not good for any of you. Well, that's what I said because I asked yeah. people, we eat fish, and I was like, well, we fish, and you know, know, and this is this is <laughs> rotten. This is awful. And go into that. You you had you know you say it's not good for humans, but it's not good for you guys. Sitting here, you all order fish. You got mercury happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, on your main body, uh, your first solution was to uh, pass a bill similar to SB 705. And see, this this is sort of my. That's okay, but this is a little bit of inside politic, inside shop talk. But it's okay you said similar to SB 205 when you immediately then went on to say what it banned and what it, and basically what it's doing is this. And I want to do this nationwide. Yeah, so that was good. So that was, um, and I like your stuff with them, uh, Miami Beach and so forth. Okay, your second solution. Um, was to tax single-use water bottles, right? Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, anybody have a reaction to this? Anybody want to have their water bottles taxed? I know no one likes it, yeah. but it's so good to not use them and to use reusable right. water bottles mm -hmm. just because... Plastic water bottles are just so bad for our environment, and they they're end up they're everywhere, the aren't they? Yeah. yeah, and people I know don't everywhere, and everyone uses them, but if and people can, don't reuse them. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's not even good to reuse them. Yeah, I know. But so yeah, so uh, it's become you know, and a piece of it after the uh, Detroit disaster with the water there, you know, and other 
localities. It's made people very paranoid about city water that's not filtered, etc. Uh, presented to reverse osmosis. But um, I like the way you cited in your oral presentation where it was from and the date. That was good. On your last solution, a circular business model. Again, a little bit of inside shop talk, you know, in circular business model. What is she, uh, Anderson graduate here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, circular business model, what the hell is she talking about? Right? Uh, so you needed to uh, be real clear about that. And, uh, you, know, so, you know, basically what this means is, you know, yeah. um, now let me give you some feedback on your summary. I prefer a summary, and I realize you're running out of time, but I prefer a summary that's a little more detailed than just, I had three points. So you can say, I had three solutions. Well, did I say there should be no doubt in this room that we need to Yeah, you did that. I'm talking about your summary, not your conclusion. I'll get to your conclusion uh, okay, in a second. Okay. Summary is different from a conclusion. Okay. Uh, Telegraph everyone. Summary is different from a conclusion. Summary is different from so a conclusion. So you want me to state each solution, right? Brief. Okay, yeah. Just so I, in brief. summary, I have had three solutions. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now why do we build redundancy into a speech like that? Why do I design it in? Why do you think you need to do that, Sarah? I think it's for the audience for them to. Not right, really because what are we? Yeah, it's easy to follow. But we know something else about the audience. What is Camilla doing a third of the time, according to social scientists, when they're listening to a speaker? They're actually not listening. Yeah, they're not paying attention. They're daydreaming. We won't say about what, and uh, you know. Uh, uh, what am I, is this class going to end? What am I going to have for dinner tonight? You know, et cetera, et cetera, right? You name it, and people are thinking about anything but being in the here and now. And so you get them in the beginning, you get them in the main body, and you get them again in the summary. So you have three shots at getting your main point over. And that's what you're after. Your conclusion, there's no doubt in this room, and your tie back, as this gentleman suggested, was nice. It was, it was well done, and it was circular, it was good. I like, everyone noticed how nicely she footnoted using the Chicago style, and she has a very nice color. I like the I like color, the yeah, color's good, yeah. And a nice colored bibliography, yeah. Very nice, very nice. So, good job, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for going first. Yay. Yes. Uh -huh. In like that outline form, uh -huh. like, or is it like, is it like no, no outline form. form yeah. Outline form. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you and uh, do you take it? I keep it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And any questions or comments about what you just saw? Anybody? What? For sources? Yes. Um, about, there's a source like history stuff, things that like are common knowledge. Right. If they're common knowledge, but we want to get in the practice and habit of saying, you know, what, what do arguments of authority. So I don't want you to say, oh, that's common knowledge. I didn't need to have any put. Like historical stuff. Historical stuff's fine. Because that's a, what we call a historical illusion. You don't have to prove that, uh, you know, Christopher Columbus discovered America, and, you know, and, uh, or the Indians discovered Christopher Columbus, or whatever. How do you want to put it politically correctly? What? You don't have any source. Okay, well, we'll, all, we'll let you know how that goes. How are we doing on time? <laughs> We don't have time for another one, huh? No, no. Okay. Well, uh, well, it was eventful. Any? Let's let's just have any other questions about what to do. So let let's.
Excuse me, what? Hi, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, for my topic, uh, what can Democrats learn? If you watch my camera while I turn around, I don't want to be rude to this person, but this thing is just, this, this has got to change. This is stupid. Yes? Is about Ralph Northam's victory. Do I assume everyone knows where that's what happened? No. You need to say you're 